So let's get started. Um, call the meeting to order. And just to let folks know, Cliff Emmons is on by phone. Katie has figured out how to do Google Docs. So we're up and running. And John, I'm not sure if he's coming or not. He wasn't feeling good, so we'll see. All right, is there a public comment on items not on the agenda? Sure, I have some public comment. You have, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I will, <coughs> just want a little bit of clarification. I saw some uh, video of your last select board meeting when you were talking about ISO and fire departments. Mm -hmm. So the ISO rating for East Montpelier is not a nine, it's a six. Because that's good. Right. It's much better. Yeah. yeah, it's not there. Um, there's a report here that I'm sure we have given to you before, but that's the detailed thing. Okay. There was also some discussion about um, what does that mean for insurance for people. The standard is for insurance companies, it's five miles from a fire station. Right. So I've created a map that shows all the fire stations that can respond in Calus, okay. and so. Essentially, everyone in Calus is covered within five miles of oh, the fire good. station. Is that road miles? No, it's just five miles. Can we have that, Tony? Yeah, that's what I made it for you. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Yep. Um, the other thing is, John mentioned that we had bought a new truck, and he said it cost five hundred thousand dollars. It only cost three hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and its price new was only four hundred and eleven, not seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay. I just like the record to reflect that. Yeah, good. Um, what was the number? It was actually three. Three hundred and thirty. You're putting this in the minutes, right? Mm -hmm. This is just to clarify in case people yeah. saw that and didn't know what was going on. That was when you <laughs> went, you got the. It was a U two year old vehicle, two -year -old, right? Right. So its brand new price was about four hundred and eleven, and we bought it for three hundred and thirty. Two yeah. years. Good. I'm glad to clarify. Um, the other thing, there was some discussion about locating a new fire station in Woodbury closer to Callis because, and there was further discussion about, well, maybe we should park a truck in Callis and that would get more people to join the fire department. So currently there's four people that live in Callis that are members of the fire department. Of those four, there's only one person, me, that's actually responding on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I wish there was something we could do to try to get to uh, we, I know it's a problem all over the place. We do as much as we can for recruitment to get I people. Know you do. So, yeah. so just locating a new station or putting a, a, a piece of equipment in town is not going to change that. Yeah. Uh, four on East Montpelier. Four, four, from four people from Callis are members of the East Montpelier. But only one is active, only and that's one you. Is active. And Toby, do you have any idea how many how many or whether there are folks who live in Callis who are active in Woodbury? That Woodbury has no Calus residents. No, no, has no Calus residents. Because I asked that question at one of the meetings. Right, yeah. Um, you know, and again, the real issue about where you locate a fire truck is not where the fire truck is, it's where the people who respond to the fire truck are. True. So if they're working in Montpelier, it doesn't matter if they live in Calus or not. They're not coming in the daytime any sooner if the fire station is in Calus. So yeah. it's really about locating volunteers that our home during the day that's going to make a difference in response time. And same thing in Woodbury, if you move it closer to Callis, the guys that are further away in Woodbury are still going to have to travel that, that distance to get to right. the fire truck. That, that came up because of the five mile piece. Right, which in Callis is not an issue. It that's may good. be an issue in Woodbury, but it's not in Callis. Because of the something was said at, I can't remember which fire department meeting it was, it might have been a Woodbury one, that said, somebody said people were getting their homeowner's insurance canceled because they, were, they weren't within five miles. And I can only tell you that that's the ignorance of either the f insurance company or the people because essentially that's a five mile radius mm -hmm. of every fire station. So maybe somebody didn't think, oh, well the Marshfield Fire Department is five mm -hmm. miles away from me, that's but Woodbury's that. not. And then, yeah, from Toby. So, um, just so, so that, you know, for the five miles, everybody yeah, in Cali seems to be within a five mile oh, well, that's distance. Good yeah, thanks for the clarification. That's it. All right. Um, I'm sure you want to make, I'll make coffee for this. Okay. Um, 
addition or changes to the agenda? I don't think so. All right, so um, we are late in getting this back to the state, but this is the certificate of highway mileage and it has not changed since last year or the year before that or the year before that, but we need a motion to approve it and sign it. I make a motion that we approve the 2019, um, uh, 20, what's the name of it? Um, certification of Highway Mile yeah, Report. Yeah, year ending February 10, 2019, so it would be for the following. Yeah, for the town of Cal. So we're just talking about the certificate of highway yeah. mileage. Okay, are there any further questions or comments on this? You don't have it second. Oh, um, second. Okay. Cliff, can you hear? Hello? Cliff? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, we're going to vote on the certificate of highway mileage. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. And I'll send this around. Um, to get two other signatures so we have a quorum of signatures and then believe it sounds like Judy has to sign this there's that okay treasurer you're up Sandra hi everybody you have packets in front of you uh, which comprise the treasurer's report it is in four sections, revenues, expenses, balance sheet, and the delinquent tax report. Uh, this month, I included all of the backup reports for the numbers uh, so that the board would best be able to see how this information was generated. In the future, you may direct me to simply uh, provide the summary pages which I have um, stapled to the front of each section. So the first section is revenues. Um, as far as general government is concerned, we have collected 80.79% of our budgeted revenues. Um, the revenues that were budgeted were uh, 890 were $896,678, and to date we've collected $724,432.23. We are at 70% or 75% or three quarters of the fiscal year. We're in good shape with regard to revenues. We expect additional re revenues from delinquent taxes, interest, <coughs> and town clerk revenues. Of note, the interest revenue is well above budget uh, early in the fiscal year. We created a sweep account, which was an account comprised of all the separate and independent town accounts, but for the McCullough Shorty and the HRA account. The purpose of this was to allow our bank to give us a premium um, interest rate and you can see that that has done very well with that particular account again it was at the auditor's suggestion uh, miscellaneous revenue is kind of was a was a revenue item that I thought you might question uh, we really don't budget anything in the miscellaneous revenue column but this year uh, Jim Barlow refunded a part of his escrow account uh, we had uh, the two the annual school tax collection fees come in. What does that mean? Uh, Donna billed the school system twenty three hundred dollars a year, and I believe uh, Eva did as well for the privilege of collecting school taxes. And you mean for the town collecting the taxes mm -hmm. on behalf of the school? That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. So they paid the town twenty three hundred dollars a year. Um, Maybe we should charge them more. <laughs> well, we'll get to that. And then there was a, a suburban propane refund of $135. Um, when Sullivan and Powers did our audit 
in FY18, they also started out the year with $416.34 in this account. So um, that was the account that jumped out at me. Okay. Highway, uh, we're at 94.68% of budgeted revenues. Um, I do expect an additional revenue in the way of the last state aid to highway payment, which will be approximately $39,000. That's paid in April, and it is likely uh, that highway revenues will meet or exceed the budget. The next section is the expense section. Uh, the general government is at 73.65% of budgeted expenditures. It would appear that those expenses are on target, although we do uh, anticipate some overages, uh, principally uh, in the town clerk and assistant town clerk wages. That's largely due to the unanticipated number of elections this year. Mm. Uh, general office expenses and has gone over budget again, largely largely due to under budgeting, and the health insurance we expect to go over budget by a bit, again um, largely due to under budgeting. Overall, uh, it, it it's quite possible that our ex expenditures will come in at will come in at budget or perhaps slightly over budget uh, with an offset in revenues I, I think will be good. Highway is about six percent over budget, all close to seven. We're at 89.93 percent of our budgeted expenditures. Uh, it would appear that highway expenses will exceed the budget, again largely due to weather conditions. The, um, you know, the overtime. Overtime and wages, right. Um, forecasting is difficult with regard to the highway budget um, as grant expenditures and revenues are part of the overall highway financial picture, but neither one of them are budgeted. So we kind of do a wait and see game. Uh, historically, the town's in-kind contributions to the grant programs have often and almost always resulted in a highway surplus. So again, I think that there's a good chance that we're gonna we're gonna be in good shape on so, the highway so side. So when as we're well. doing the grant projections, we figure out a dollar amount, but then we do it in kind. Right? Um, I have not participated in a uh, in writing a grant with highway uh, but the way it looks is uh, that they estimate the cost very carefully, estimate the cost of a particular project. If the grant is covered by 90%, um, they will request 90% reimbursement. The other 10% actually comes out of our budget line items. So a tone, uh, it's a strategy, and the strategy has worked very well in the past where our budget actually has tucked into it all that is necessary to, to accomplish the grants. So oftentimes we're, we're, we're going to get grant payments for 90%, but our 10% was never budgeted as a line item. Mm -hmm. It, it's tucked into the general highway budget. Right. Just as a postscript, um, working with the auditors and NIMRIC, we're going to tickle the last bit of tickling to the NIMRIC program to reflect the strategy is to create expense lines right within the highway budget for the grant expenditures. Mm -hmm. That's good. And they'll be attached to the grant revenues associated with them so we can more closely forecast um, what is what is happening there? I, I think we could be in pretty good shape here. Um, so let's go to the balance sheet because there's good news there. I think. So you haven't really seen a balance sheet from Nimric yet, and if you just turn your first page over and take a look, there it is. And what it tells you is this: the town has. Um, one, roughly $1.2 million in assets, most of which is in the checking account. Of that $1.2 million, almost $700,000 is committed to other funds, such as hey, the- can you make that bigger? I have think, to stop. Scott, there's no, an extra so hard to make it bigger. I can make it bigger, but I can't take minutes. Uh, oh yeah, not worth it. No. Well, no, she just gave Scott a copy. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, that's okay. 
So it's good. So we have 1.2 in the checking? Essentially 1.2 in the checking. Uh -huh. Roughly 700, of which $700,000 is committed to other funds, such as the Highway Equipment Fund, the Town Hall Renovation Project Fund, mm -hmm. the Conservation Fund. And you can take a look at the last page of that packet. Hang on, quick before, is that, so I don't get too confused, is that the 685, the almost 700? Yes, the due okay. to from. Okay. So at the third page is an itemization of that due to from line. Due to from. When you look at your balance sheet, <coughs> yeah. you see the assets, checking account, yep. HRA, HRA deposit, petty mm -hmm. cash, and then due to from. It's really due to, right? Well, <coughs> due to, due from. Because some of it we might get back in grant, yeah, grant money and that kind of thing, right? So, for instance, okay. uh, this the highway equipment fund is is a reserve fund that mm -hmm. can only be used for highway capital equipment. The town hall renovation, due to do from, are monies specifically segregated only for the town hall renovation project, and so on throughout the list. So, the Highway Equipment Fund, for instance, we were going to take money out of there to make the first payment on the lease. And that is what is going to happen to... So that's not reflected in... That hasn't happened No, yet, that's right? just your, your budget plan for FY20 next year. 20 20. Okay. for next year. Okay. So is the net of all this plus minus on the second page... The minus 685. So it, it starts do. out so that it balances. It starts out with the first line is that minus 685, 919. Right. Which, and then it what's the, itemizes. What's the next line? 102, <clears throat> 231. Highway fund due to from. So the highway funds are separated by law from general government funds. Right. So that is what is basically left in their account revenues minus um, revenues minus um, expenditures plus whatever is attributable to them from last year. That's like their operating budget. Where yeah. It says highway fund, that's their operating budget. Right. And then where it says highway equipment fund, that's the reserve fund. Right. Okay, but this is current year. This is the current fiscal year. This is the current fiscal year. It's FY19, so it's not FY20. So the next section is the town's current liabilities. And you'll see the current liabilities are in excess of $177,000. Mm -hmm. um, most of this is due to the school district and it is being held back in anticipation of the true up, which takes place in April. So that's when the final grand list and all of the changes that were made um, to that grand list in terms of residential tax rates, non-residential tax rates, current use and so forth, it all gets trued up in April. We are legally allowed to hold back that amount as it represented the amount of delinquent taxes as of the time the last payment was due. So that's how that works. So we skip, We went to the next one? Does oh, I went right on to the liabilities. I'm sorry, did you have more questions uh, well, about the I still, assets? I'm still trying to understand... Oh, okay, so we're on liabilities. Mm -hmm. So we're, even though we're talking about delinquent taxes, we're not looking at that yet. No. Um, and we're not on, I guess my questions are on the third page. We flipped to that at one point. So I'm going to just ask it one more time because yeah. I don't know where to ask it. So if I were to tally everything below this negative 685, yes. Does that all. It comes up to 685, 9, 19, 85. Okay, so the, 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 the comings and goings under 685 on this third page are where that 685 comes correct. from. Correct. Okay, that Thank is you. correct. Okay, so this, okay, good question, Sharon. So this is, the 685 is its total of all of these expenses. Yes. 
So all the time. Okay. Go ahead. And there. No, no. That, and the reason that this page is important is because if something is out of balance or there has been a misposting, we're going to be able to see it on this page, and it won't zero out at the bottom. There will be right. a negative or a positive number. And then I go back in and I find that error. It's a check. It's Thank a you. check, yes. yes. Okay, so second to the last, um, CLG East Calais Village grant 7500 So that's what monies has been expended so far on, I'm trying to remember his name. Brian Knight. Brian, right, Brian Knight. So those are his payments mm -hmm. thus far. And um, there is going to be a grant reimbursement, okay. but for right now, the town has covered that. Okay. And any of the grants that are in the negative are actually monies that the town has covered. Okay, so the same holds true with Jack Hill Culvert. Jack Hill Culvert, I think we're, we're in the red on that one, that the grant reimbursement did not cover the entire amount of the grant expenditures in that particular case. Okay. That's a rarity, actually. Um, but you're going to have grant reimbursements that are going to come in that will more than cover the expenses. Mm -hmm. okay. The highway is a wait and see. It's, it's not easy for me to forecast that. Okay. It's just the nature of the beast. It's the nature of the beast. It's the strategy, and it's worked very well for the town so far. So, you know, what, what, what we're going to try and do is as using Nimerick as a tool to help us best uh, be able to forecast what's going yeah, on there. This is great. So your liabilities, um, at, I just wanted to make sure you understood that the uh, statutes do provide for a holdback of delinquent taxes as of the are time. Are we taxes now? Or? Oh, no, we're on liabilities. We're still on liabilities. We're still on liabilities. In the middle. Okay. So this is liabilities are what we owe. Mm -hmm. So the largest number is what we owe to the school. Right. And that was the holdback of the delinquent taxes that remained uncollected as of the date of the last payment was due. And we hold that back um, to see what the true up, what we really owe them. We may owe them less than this. Mm -hmm. I would rather not, <laughs> I would rather hold this money mm -hmm. and pay them what we actually owe them. So if we don't- We, uh, we were not billed more than this. Yeah. So if we don't get all the money from the delinquent taxes, how do we pay the school the... the? It comes out of the town's coffers. So that's why it is so important that we have a fund balance and that we try very hard to maintain a fund, a good fund balance from year to year. Hmm. We are, once these taxes go delinquent, the town has the liability to pay them. So that's why the delinquent taxpayers write all their checks to the town, oh, pardon me, town of Callis. Because that money is owed to us. We have covered them 100%. Okay. So say, can you say a different way what you meant when you said that we're permitted by statute to hold back? Because I heard, what I understood is that we don't have to pay the entire bill to the school. But I don't think collected. that's what you meant. No, what uh, we are billed um, in August an amount that the school projects based on our grand list at that time. Mm -hmm. But there are changes that occur during tax collection that the listers process. We have two payments due to the school district after each tax collection you can, by law, hold back the delinquent tax portion okay. and hold it back. In, in other words, still owe it to the school. Still owe it to the Thank school. You. So I took our bill mm -hmm. and I calculated what to pay them minus the delinquent taxes due. But it's, it could be more than this, but it's not likely. I, it's based mm -hmm. on the actual bill. I just held back our delinquent tax portion. So the bill minus delinquent taxes went to the school. And we make payments to the school twice. Once after we do. each collection. But we can hold back an amount that we haven't yet collected. Right. Oh, this correct. year I made one payment just because I'm just utilizing Nimerick and trying to get the taxes mm -hmm. pulled together with all of the, it just took me a minute. 
But yes, we made one payment this year. Typically we make two, and then we do a hold back. And you've done that here in Calus before. Okay, so this is normal practice. Yes. Okay. And so, other towns do it as well. Scott has a question? Just when, when, when it's at the end. Well, well no, go ahead. This, is, this is beautiful, Sandra. This oh. Is, this <laughs> is the, the first uh, time I've seen a NIMRIC uh, report outside of a classroom situation. Thank you. you. Very nice. It, it's really clean, yeah. but I, and I came in not to bother you, but to help you walk through it, no, this and is great. That's, that's so that wonderful. you can yeah. understand understand it. I find that a nice, tidy balance sheet really mm -hmm. helps you un, understand and these where we cover are. Cover pages explaining it are really great. I'm sorry. Oh, Scott's not done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you stop at the compliments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you and thank Nimric. Right. Um, so. Um, I'm more used to seeing in the, in the school budget that there are various funds. Um, everything I've seen here talks about general fund. Are there any other funds that that we've set up in in Nemric? For, for example, the ones I'm mostly interested in. Yes, very. What you don't have, Scott, is a. No, he has the whole. Package. You, if you go to the budget, uh, pardon me, the balance sheet section on page three, you're going to see what you're so interested in. They're itemized. It looks like this. Uh -huh. yeah. And all of those are separate funds. Oh, cool. And the way they oh, are separated out is by the first two yep. digits. Love it. That's cool. Okay. Isn't that great? So, so, so one, one last question. Yep. Um, so these are able, these, this list are able to span fiscal years, is that correct? Yes. Awesome. And that's the beauty of that memory. Is so great. That was really that, a, was that was a hard push with QuickBooks. It, it yeah. was a lot of I mean, work for, for it really yeah. Donna had to do it all by hand. It yeah. was hard. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. So just one last uh, I'm gonna give you one more piece of information. Each of these numbers uh -huh. is uh, 10, 20, 21, blah, blah, blah. the first yeah. two digits. Yeah. Everything that has to do with the town hall renovation fund or with the Callis uh, Village Grant. It all happens under those first two numbers, whether it's an expense yeah. or an income. Mm -hmm. So they all tie in together, and that's how you get these net numbers. That is so great. That is terrific. It, it works. Thank you all. It yeah. works pretty well. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. That is wonderful. You're welcome. So I had one last, I think I have another question about the school thing. So if we don't, Okay, so if we don't end up collecting all the delinquent taxes that we need, it's we still have to pay the school yes. their share no yes. matter what. That okay. is correct. And okay. that's why, and you said, so it's nice that we get to hold back because it allows us a little bit of lag to figure out what we really owe the school instead of the estimate right. that we got in August. Um, but when we do figure out what we actually have to pay, then we have to pay it, and the town pays it and covers the bill for the delinquent payers, and that's why they write a check for the entire amount to the town, not to the school. Right. They, right. they owe us now. Right. We, yeah, I said in my been, own words. Yes. I really understand it. You did, and that's exactly right. And so if we overpay the school... They will refund they us. They refund us. Mm -hmm. Okay. But because we had a, I, I'm being very fiscally conservative at this point oh, because we did have a, a short history of deficit mm -hmm. that I would much rather us hold back than pay too much at this point and get the money back. Mm -hmm. and because of the way I see that we cover so many grants, I just wanted to be very careful of mm -hmm. your cash flow because mm -hmm. I don't have a, ca a good feel for the cash flow ups and downs yet having only been here for almost a year now. Right. Okay. So fiscal year 19 opens. So now we're going to talk about the fund balance. And if you remember, when the auditor, uh, when um, Fred Duplessy came in, we opened the year with a fund balance, the prior year's fund balance, with $318,000. To the good. To the good. 
His comment was, this is a great amount of money to have. It's about 20% of your budgeted expenses. This is what will cover you for your first couple of months into your new fiscal year before you have started to collect taxes. And that's why we didn't have to take out a loan in anticipation of taxes this past year, That right? is correct. It also helps um, float your grant expenses. Mm -hmm. For instance, the highway has over $70,000 in outstanding grant expenses, which we were reimbursed for, but we covered that out of our budget. So we really want to nurture that fund balance as mm -hmm. best we can going forward. Now, there is the next line called the current year fund balance. Hang on a second, I'm making a note. Okay. That's why we didn't have to take out. And that's one of the first times we haven't had to take out. I, I don't know, but I think I so. Think so. Oh. Yeah. Okay, sorry, go ahead. So the next line is called the current year fund balance. And that figure represents the difference between all of our revenues to date for this fiscal year and all of our expenditures to date. So if we were just starting off, that, that would be our fund balance. Okay? That's, right. that's this year's fund balance right now, that $81,000. The $81,000. Oh. Right. That's, and that's, so that's to date. That's right. Difference between revenue and expenses to date. Correct. The next line is your total fund balance, and that figure is arrived at by adding the prior year's fund balance and the current year fund balance. And the example I give to make this meaningful to you is, in other words, if our fiscal year ended on March 31st, mm -hmm we would open the next fiscal year with $400,000 to the good. Even though we know we had expenses that were... It, it's only, if we ended the, if our fiscal year ended right now, mm -hmm. we would have $400,000 to the good. We started out with over 300. Mm -hmm. We currently have 81. And we currently have 81. Okay. So liabilities aren't... And liabilities aren't a, aren't so liabilities exactly. aren't a part of that at the moment. Yeah, it makes total sense. And then your last line is just a, a complete combination of your liabilities, your reserves, and your fund balance. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that has some meaning. It seems superfluous to me at the moment, but um, that's a number that I, I, I don't think that really applies to the way we, to a cash basis system, but it's there. So overall, I think that our fiscal position is pretty darn good. I, with no appreciable deficit anticipated, I think revenues um, will take care of any expenditure shortfalls. Mm -hmm. We still have highway grant and expenditures to work into that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we're looking pretty good as we, had, as we head for the end of the year. Okay, that sounds great. Yes. So, uh, delinquent tax report, um, at the conclusion of our 2018 tax effort, there was in excess of $171,000 in outstanding delinquent taxes and associated penalties and interest. Currently, there is $90,000 uh, outstanding in delinquent taxes, penalties, and interest. Um, since the beginning of this fiscal year, that's since July 1, the delinquent tax collector has collected in excess of $101,000 in penalties, interest, and taxes. Okay, so, okay since the beginning of the fiscal year. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, tax, the tax collection so that was 7118, and we're almost to the end. Yeah. So the taxes, uh, delinquent taxes, are, continue to come in. Most people have entered into an, uh, into agreements and they are maintaining them. There are those few who have not contacted the office to describe their situation and who have not made a payment. 
uh, with their next bill, the bills go out the first week of the month, they will be getting a notice that I am going to bring a list of taxpayers in that category to the select board. It is for the select board's information only at this point. You might have some insight. Maybe someone has moved and they're ill and the bills aren't getting to them. Um, but the policy, the written policy is for the delinquent taxes to be paid in full by June 30th. And the way I've seen some of these taxes come in, folks are, are probably waiting on their tax return money. Could be. And, and they're paying it all in a lump and they're not calling me. But we still have to uh, remind them that everything has to be paid by June 30th. Right. Uh, there are, there, there, it, there may be. Do you have a rough idea of how many people, how many taxpayers? Um, oh. Okay, gotcha. Never mind. 30. Oh, 30 altogether, but um, I don't know, maybe 10. Maybe 10 haven't contacted me. And there are folks who haven't made a payment or entered into an agreement who have called and said, look, this is what's going on. I am going to have this money by a date certain. I'm going to send it to you. And I'm okay. going to take them at their word. Yeah. I mean, if that's I the way you do it. Yep. So, um, I'll, I'll let the board at this point decide whether they really do want all of this backup information or if they are happy with um, just the summary sheets, other than the balance sheet. I think that's valuable to, to actually see the balance sheet. That's only three, I mean, personally, I, I would like to see all the, all the backup. Yeah. No problem. I don't know about anybody else, but when I have I, nothing better to do, I'll probably go through it line by line. It's, it's a lot to absorb, so I think looking at all of it and having it all available as we ask our questions to me yeah. makes, it makes sense. Yeah. If you want me to come back in uh, at your to your next meeting to answer any questions or if you have questions that you want to email me about and mm -hmm. have me answer in the meantime that would be fine. Yeah, it, and if it somebody, is a lot. If one of us emails you with a question it would be a question maybe that we'd all want to see sure. the question and the answer too, which would be helpful. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent job. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank There's you. one more thing. Okay. <laughs> yes, there is one more thing. So I wanted to ask the board what what their thoughts are, and I don't need to stay for for your conversation, but I wanted to present to the board that our. Um, Town report and t and expenses for uh, the town meeting were uh, four thousand seventy nine dollars and three cents. Now that's the cost of the report, including Laura, and, including Laura, the extra postage <coughs> and the um, production of the report. There's also in that number is $300 for the sound system that the Whammy Bar billed us for. Mm, I saw that in the orders. The um, number... How, how uh, much was... Do you have a breakdown? How much was Laura's bill? Yes, it was $625 for graphic design. Okay, and the cost of printing was... The cost of printing and the first round of postage was $2,903.67. That's printing and printing and postage. The initial uh, postage. Um, the staff opted to get back any books that were undeliverable, so we could update our database. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there was additional postage, close to um, two hundred and fifty dollars for those return books. But I think in the long run, that will save us mm -hmm. a lot of money. In, in just simply not printing those books, that number of books. There were 41, 50, 60 books that were returned undeliverable. Okay. Is there is there any um, are, are is there any merit to and then are we even permitted to uh, invite people to opt out of getting a town report? Because I get my mail at Adamant Co-op. You do you too? No, no, he's not killing. Okay, um, and they had piles of town reports just tossed into the both oh. ours and East Montpelier's. They gave me one of East Montpelier's like, oh, here's, you know, it's in the recycling. Oh, that's awful. Um, so... Statutorily, you can change your charter 
And by not change your charter, pardon me, you can put an article onto your town warning that says that town reports can be picked up as I noticed opposed that there was to mail being web. mailed. Yeah, there are some there of these are some websites that, that I was it. looking at that had that, and I'm like, oh, so they have to go pick them up and yeah. get them mailed. But, well, but, but something in between where people are allowed to say, please take me off of the distribution. Well, the distribution list is to all, um, it, it's to, it's to the, it's, it's to the households. So if the staff could figure out a, a meaningful way to ask people if they wanted the books or not, mm -hmm. then it would help us order. But our imperative, statutory imperative, is to mail out by a certain right. date yeah. to the households in right. the municipality. Yeah, and I don't know, it, you know, something to think about. Yeah, by date certain, let us know if you do not want to get. But then we'd have to do a mailing to people to say that they don't want it. It could just be front porch forum to start. I mean, there's nothing that requires us to do any of it. Well, it's yeah, the, it's the warning. No, 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 I mean to allow them to opt out. So oh. an invitation to opt out. My biggest concern about that is the administrative hassle for you of who wants it and who doesn't. Right. It might be that, that more time consuming to right. figure out. But I did see on I forget whose website it was. There's somebody around here that you have. Town reports are now ready for pickup at the office. I would want that. That could cause a lot more traffic in the office for one thing. Well, if we're lucky. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and some and, people might not really realize. realize. Well, that's the thing. I think that the I do think that for people, for people who want the town report, having it land in their mailbox is is nice. It's a reminder if you're not paying attention, and mm -hmm. it does kind of prompt people to show up. Yeah. Not to mention the waste of paper. Well. It, it's, it certainly bears, I think, a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of this conversation this evening is to ask the board if they think it is appropriate to bill the school for a percentage of the cost of production of producing the town report and the whammy bar bill. Their number of pages, uh, they had 20% of the pages in the town report. So, uh, I'm thinking that the board, that I, I, you have not billed them before that I mm -hmm. can see. I know other towns do bill them and they do pay. Uh, Worcester bills them. Mm -hmm. uh, Middlesex billed them the last time I heard. I don't know any other way to, uh, I'm sure there are many ways to think about how and what would be their fair, fair. portion. Um, now who paid uh, who paid for the um, daycare stuff? We did. That's not included. That's in not that. included. How much was that? Oh, I think sixty nine dollars or oh, something okay. like That's that. That's not a big deal. Yeah. So um, if if we just looked at the cost of printing the town report, the graphic design, mm -hmm. the excess postage, and the whammy bar system it would look to me that their 20 percent would be roughly 816 dollars rounded up mm -hmm. um, because we haven't built them before and because we are at such a tender juncture um, with this school mm -hmm. and all the conversations around that I, I didn't want to send a bill without the select board yeah. you know, talking about it and deciding whether you would think it is appropriate at this point in time. I think it's okay. I think they could right. pay. Um, but the trouble is, is we haven't said anything to them. I, I think it would be nice to get the 800 and something dollars returned, but I think I would want to let them know ahead of time that we're going to maybe bill you the next time. I wouldn't like just want to send a bill and not have had any kind of communication up front. Well, then maybe the board would consider opening that dialogue mm -hmm. as right. to for the next for next year. We are over budget on the town report. It, we just are, but that's not the reason. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I actually, Denise, I, I want, let's go back and 
remind ourselves that you said Worcester bills them and they pay it. Who else? Middlesex. Middlesex. So, so we would be sending it to the supervisory union? You'd be sending it to the Callis School District. Oh, okay, yeah. so, so it wouldn't be just going into the supervisory union's pile of bills and they're used to paying mm -hmm. bills like this. Right. And they, I, well, wouldn't have no, I, I, I wouldn't would, have a problem with that at all. No, but I think just because this is going to the school and we want to have good relationships oh, with our fellow board members and school folks, I think from my perspective, I would want to let them know that, okay, this year it cost us this much money to print your portion of the town report. Here's notice that we can and we may next year, or we will next year, bill you for this portion of the cost. We could ask them this year if they'd be willing to contribute their portion. Yeah, well, the other thing is, where does the money come from? Because it's still, it's still it's, our money. It's our money. It right. So it's like... It's true. It's in one pocket and out the other. Yeah. As Barry Bernstein always used to say, it all comes yeah. out of the same two pockets. Yeah, because we, we have the town budget, we have mm -hmm. the school budget, our taxes support both. Right. But this so, would... I mean, I... Yeah. On paper, yeah. Budget wise, it would look like it, they're yeah. It's their accountability. Share. It's like right. that is one of their expenses, right? And they should be, you know, held accountable, right? And they but, don't. Yeah. And we pay the generator bill for the school. Don't yeah. forget. Yeah. Um, you know, and they let us use the school and the kitchen at no charge. So it's so that's true. That's you know, right. So it just was a just wanted to open that's that conversation. True. We are a, a tad mm -hmm. over budget. We could go this route or not. Yeah. It's really up to the board to give yeah. that some consideration. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Cliff, yeah. are you Cliff? Do you want to weigh in on this? Well, the thought that came to my mind is already been brought up, and that was that you know the school does incur some expense as a result of us using the facilities right. yeah, they for pay, the town meeting. Right. I mean, they pay Chris Tuller to be there mm -hmm. to do set up and clean up and all that. So that's, you know, an expense. Mm -hmm. So they could probably uh, argue with the other point. Have we, mm -hmm. have we resolved the idea of um, being able to uh, utilize the dumpsters there? No, not yet. That kind of fell by the wayside when everything else was going on. Mm -hmm. So, no, I like it. Yeah, it's it's true. It goes it goes both ways. But good. To, but a it's good, good to it's, know. It's a good framing in right. case they thought that oh, they yeah. were going to come and ask for the town to pay. Right. I mean, I think we could let them know how much it costs to print their portion of the town report. That's a good idea. Yeah. So that they understand, I can send um, the school board members and a note and say, you know, this is how much it costs to do the town report. This is the expenses broken down, just so you know. And leave, and it, we, and, and leave it at that. And yeah, we appreciate yeah, we could say we're not looking for reimbursement. We appreciate you hosting town meeting. Thank you for the contribution right. you make. Yeah, I think that I think nice that's a better yeah. way to do it. So, Kay, if you want to put that on my to-do list, Kay. Mm -hmm. And I'll get you a breakdown of those numbers. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Treasurer, Madam Treasurer? Yeah. Nice work. Very nice work. Yes, thank excellent. you so much. Yes, thank you, Sandra. Thank, thank you, Sandra. you. Thank you. So we'll just continue with this format. I like that. Until you tell me. And are you going to no. do it? I mean, um, I'll do it but on two um, sides of the pages next time to save paper, but I thought the first time around. How often? Quarterly? Quarterly. Well, well do you want to do a quarterly or monthly? It's up to you. I think let's try. Monthly is good. Monthly is good, we but this is a it. lot of work for monthly. I mean, right now we're on end of March. We have April, May, June. I think we ought to follow it pretty closely to yeah. the end. That's what I think. Just in case you, something, you, comes up. something comes up and you have to really decide right. whether you want to make an expense or not, it might be good to mm -hmm. so feel that you we all understand what decision we're making this close to the end. So do you want to have it so that you give us a, these an update like this at the last select like, board meeting of the month? Yes, this felt, this was a, a, yes, it would either be this, unless the last select board meeting was on a date that it was very hard to generate all the information. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that could happen and then I would go to the first, the next right. meeting, okay. the first of the month. But I like this end of the month piece. Yeah. 
And I would suggest that we don't necessarily have to spend this amount of time every month. Right. You know, no. we can have the report and review it and... Well, especially if you get it to us ahead of time. Well, that's yeah. a question. If I get it to you by the last meeting of the month, you can look at it and mm -hmm. I can come in the first meeting of the month and answer your questions right. on it. Maybe... What, think about that. Then you have that I mean, much time it electronically to talk ahead of about time. it. Instead of trying yeah. to think of questions on the fly, which yeah. I appreciate is, is yeah. troublesome. Well, maybe while we're getting used to it, but at some point, I would I think we could get we could arrive at a place where we have the report. We've all had a chance to review it, and mm -hmm. we do just a, um, a quick once over. N not even we just you know maybe quarterly we spend a lot of time on it, but once a month we mm -hmm. say yes we got it. Does anybody have any questions? And we accept the report without discussion. Well, I, well, I th yeah. I, I mean, if you put it to eventually, the, yeah, eventually. But I think for right now, I like the idea of at least till the end of this fiscal year. That it should give us that's another three months to review the reports and get used to them and get used to the way they walk well, through them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, yeah. and what I and what I'm saying is when we get to a point where we don't have to talk about it, I still would like to get it. Yeah, me sure. Too. And oh, you're yeah. gonna it's it's gonna be. I mean, this is the sort of thing I'm imagining. It's a lot of work the first time, and eventually it's going to be it'll be easier, right? Yeah. Because we're I'm still, as I said, we have one. I believe there's one more tweak. It's already been designed that I mm -hmm. need to uh, program that I think will further help us nail down the pr an ability to better analyze that highway budget, mm -hmm. and I should have that done by next month. Okay. by next month's report. Um, but Great. we're all getting used to it, yeah. so we'll do that together. Thank you very much, and we will let you go home now. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. everyone. Thanks, Sandra. You're welcome. All right. John. I have right. I got a whole pile of stuff on. Uh, <laughs> town Hall progress. Uh, Progress is good. I think Murphy Cell Tech is there right now, <coughs> finishing up the air oh, ceiling. Oh, that's that. Yeah, the fog that fogs up the hose. Yep. Um, the uh, all the drywall is arriving tomorrow morning. Um, they want to get it. It's such a heavy load. They want to get it before the roads get too squishy for mm -hmm. heavy trucks. Um, insulation starts. <coughs> I think either Friday or a week from today. And then the drywall is hung immediately after that. Mm -hmm. All the rough and wiring is done. The rough and plumbing is done. The uh, fire alarm. Just another day for the for Dan Kellen to finish up the fire alarm. Um, the, uh, the guys are going to be hanging drywall in the lift on Thursday, and so we can call whoever's. Uh, Accessibility solutions to tell them to come put the lift in. Mm -hmm. uh, the upstairs circuits are all energized, so you can actually turn on all the lights and outlets that we ever used to have upstairs wow. are, are all there. Um, he's finished, uh, the carpenters have finished all the, uh, the exterior trim along the roof. That's pretty much it. It's going well. And we're doing the town hall renovation committee meeting on Thursday, weather permitting that it's not 30 below, over at the town hall to do a site visit. So if anybody else wants to join Cliff and I, let me know before the end of the meeting tonight because we should continue tonight's meeting to that time. So we meet the... This is Thursday morning. I can't make it Thursday morning. John Brabant said he might, so... We'd only be able to stick around for a minute. Ernie, Ernie saw the notice Donna sent out um, saying that we were going to gather there and do oh. a quick walk. So maybe we should do it another time? Well, he just Ernie cautions us that it's going to be noisy uh, and there's going to be people screwing drywall on the wall, uh -huh. carpenters sawing and stuff. They're working in there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still time to do a quick tour real quick through the building. Okay. See what it is. Okay. All right. Good night. And the time, time. So the roads will be hard at 8 in the morning. Okay. Um, and we're on timeline. 
or on schedule? Pretty good, right? You know, it's all weather dependent. If, yeah. we, if we suddenly start getting really nice weather so we can get some of the outside stuff done, especially mm -hmm. that large concrete pour for the bottom of the front steps. Right. And, and the, the whole septic system. Um, but if it continues to snow, it's going to stop someday. It's going to stop someday. It could yeah. snow in May. They can. Right out with the tulips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Happens all the time. Yeah, but not probably 16 inches. But Anyway, no. uh, cross your fingers. Everybody cross your fingers mm -hmm. that maybe this uh, select board meeting will be in that building in three months. We'll see. We don't want to rush it. We want to do it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Good. Anybody have any other questions for John on town hall estate? Yes. And, oh, I know. Um, DRB. When are we going to file the DRB? Oh, the yeah. application because I, I have to get sign off. Yeah, story. you're right. Um, we we'll talked about that Thursday. Okay. All right. So we don't need to do it tonight. Um, I don't think it's been said. I'm sorry. I was a little um, multitasking here. We, we, uh, I printed it out too. We had the, in our materials for tonight, the reports from Donna that said mm -hmm. the show that we're slightly over budget. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys talk about that? Not yet. Okay. I just thought it should be said out loud since we have it. No, I mean, it's, I wish it wasn't that way. And, and uh, as, the, as the project moves along, if I can find any place mm -hmm. that we can save money, uh, jump on it. Well, and we, I think after Thursday night, we, I mean, after Thursday's meeting, we might have a better idea. Maybe we can get Donna to come in at some point and talk about budget. I think she just put this stuff together, so I haven't even really had a chance to study it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and obviously my question and everyone's question will be, what do we, you know... <clears throat> what do um, we do? Yeah, what options do we have to check that? Because it's been moving in that direction mm -hmm. for a little while. Um, and then how are we going to make that up? Well, we'll so have money in the town hall fund after July 1. July 1. I think when I was talking to Sandra, she mentioned something about $40,000 somewhere, but I don't have a clear picture of it, what she's talking about. So I want to get together with her and yeah. Donna. And don't take that. Yeah, don't. Cancel, cancel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, my understanding now is that we're fifteen thousand dollars short, roughly. Yeah. And that number moves around a little bit. Right. right. If it stays there, and I think that's something we can handle. Um, we're supposed to have people feeding the bushes for uh, donations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, the, the money piece, we just don't really have a good. Yeah. Good option to discuss it tonight. No. But there's, uh, I don't see a whole lot that we can cut um, at this point. Well, Donna's note included that to take the 4000 out for the floors, that there was another option that, she was going to bring up on it. Thursday. And also, we may find substantial savings in the disposal field, the septic system, if, uh, if we can do some combination of using the town at least the maybe larger truck to draw sand. Mm -hmm. That is a big part of the of the expense. Right. It's just the hauling the sand for the mound system and uh, and the excavation. The right. hauling, yeah. Well, that that goes two things. That's pretty much it. <laughs> right. As a mound system, right? <laughs> dirt holes and dirt. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, and that might be something the town crew can help work on when they're not town roads. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like the paying, taking money out of one pocket and putting in the other thing. We're still paying the road crew to do, do that work. Yeah, you know? right. Um, and and I, if, if it looks like we're in a situation where they work there and then have to charge overtime for other work, then we should start looking at it. See if there are Not yet. economical ways of, of going about it. Maybe just hiring someone with an excavator maybe cheaper than paying time and a half. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Okie dokie. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. See you Thursday. Okay. Hello, Southern Vermont ISP people. <laughs> CV fiber, please. Well, that's what it is now? I saw that, yeah. <laughs>
Fiber. When did its name change? Um, well, it's still sent over on internet in terms of the town vote on it, but right. in terms of branding, the official trademark is CV Fiber. Central Vermont Fiber. Central Vermont Fiber, and it's following is EC Fiber, which is based in Royalton, mm -hmm. all the way down to Hartford. So. What does EC stand for? Eastern Central Vermont. Okay. <laughs> I like that, by the way, because. There's been a lot of, sh like, was the NPR I heard a lot about broadband and are we ever really going to get broadband at actual speed in Vermont, blah, 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 yeah. retail and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm clueless about what the technology is that's bringing internet into my house, but when you <laughs> lay, brand yourselves with fiber, yeah. I'm like, I think, oh. And there's Kingdom that Fiber means as we're well. We're getting fiber. King okay. Which is the. There are almost 30 towns in the kingdom. And that actually is going on right now in, in uh, Craftsbury and Greensboro are getting fiber to the home right now. Oh, wow. And, uh, but anyway, I'll start with, um, and you guys can chime in at time you want. Um, we are actively looking for money right now to do the actually business plan and uh, feasibility studies. But from our experience talking to both EC Fiber and um, I think we've had four different presentations from consulting firms that do this kind of planning and engineering. Mm -hmm. They're all pretty encouraged by it. Now, the the work that I've done for the you know because I'm a GIS geek, um, it looks pretty feasible if we end up with forty percent of people taking the service. And so we're going to be doing a survey. Um, and I've been trying to think of whether I should send out the survey or maybe have. Maybe the town send out the survey. Um, I'm trying to, to figure out how do we get the best return on the survey. Mm -hmm. The first phase will be doing it over, you know, using Front Porch Forum or something like that. And then if it's not a good return, actually going door to door and mm -hmm. finding volunteers to do that. And in that, we're asking for people to make a, you know, a good commitment, yes or no, or some level of interest. Mm -hmm. And then we're also looking for funds to, to help if you want to make a contribution or would you be willing to pay for a year in advance or two years mm -hmm. in advance. Do you have prices already? Do you know? It's going to be in the $75 to $100 a month range, something like that. Um, the piece that's, um, we haven't, the board has not decided. Now it's up to 17 towns. Woodbury finally joined. Um, so now it's all 17 contiguous towns. Um, the board has not decided how the priority is going to get set for who goes first, because mm -hmm. we believe it's going to have to be staged. Yeah. And part of it, I think, really depends on who's, you know, which town, in my opinion, I'd be advocating for the town with the biggest interest in terms of commitment mm -hmm. to doing it. Um, there is some issues about where we can tie into fiber to make the thing work. Um, and you'll notice this fiber up and down County Road. I mean, this fiber all, the way, already? all the way to Kent Museum. Oh. Um, but it's all, you cannot access it, and you never will access it. It's Consolidated Communications in, in Adelphia. Uh, I mean, uh, the Xfinity. Oh, I mean, I, I started with Adelphia, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we're going to be, you know, looking for that. The other news that you, it affects most of Calus, not all of Calus, is that the Washington Electric Co-op is seriously considering running the fiber in its electrical space. And what's the advantage of that for us? We will not be paying attachment fees, which are a significant cost to running mm -hmm. this. It's $14 per pole per, per year. That's a lot yeah, of poles. Bill mentioned something about that, but I don't really yeah. understand Yeah, so the board is looking at doing a fee, their own feasibility study as to whether they ought to offer that and then lease the fiber to organizations like ours because Washington Electric is in 41 communities, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, So what if you have Margaret Electric, like me? You, CP Fiber will take care of you, <laughs> 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 Um So it's my intent that we, we move fast. And I also, you know, if we could come up finding some fundraising, you know, all you hear in this town is fundraising, I know. I know, it is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. And it's, it's an amazing town because people do give here. But, um, you know, finding, you know, some investment. In it. The, good, the other good news is, you know, for some reason, the, the governor and the legislature are on the same page on this. And you probably heard that on, on, on VPR. Um, 
that bill has cleared most of the House um, committees, and it's, the Senate has been taking testimony on it all session already. Um, and that bill would allow would provide up to sixty thousand dollars for planning money for any communications union district. And since we're the only one that exists at this point, I mean, EC Five is a communication right. union district, but they don't need any planning money; they're already Sorry. operational. Um, so that is, bodes well for us. Yeah, we're, a total of sixty thousand for planning. Yeah, and then for the yeah, whole state. No, well, one grant okay. for this year, and we're the only existing body, so oh, okay. it's not a. I think that will be all right. The other part of the bill that's really useful is they're authorizing Vita to bond for $10 million for communication union districts. So we would actually have a source of bonding <coughs> mm -hmm. provided we have a, you know, a business plan that says we can pay it back. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all good things happening on the legislative side of things. What about federal? Okay, so now we're applying for a USDA Rural Development Assistance Grant on this week for $25,000 or $30,000, which is the max for planning they have. Mm -hmm. Then there's the Northern Borderlands Commission, which I'm not sure you're familiar with, but it's been around for about 10 years. I don't know how long it's been around, but it was only for the Northeast Kingdom counties in New Hampshire. Now it's for the whole state of Vermont. And that is for economic development purposes. And we are trying to sell fiber as a community development, economic development oh, it is. Um, issue that, um, that we need to do. So there's a lot of things happening. I, I wish I could say it's gonna happen, you know, Next year, we're, there is a goal of trying to have a pilot project connecting it to you know a number of houses this year. But if that does happen, it'll probably be in Roxbury because EC Fiber runs a line right up to the Roxbury line. Oh, so okay. we might be able to connect 25 houses and say in, in Roxbury. In Roxbury, yeah, that was, that was started, um, which has some positive you know spin on it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, because people can say this is great. Right. The other thing is, I mean, there, the state's fiber, which is available for use at a very reasonable price, ends in Hardwick. <laughs> so running it from Hardwick to Woodbury to Callis is... When you say ends, David, it comes from the other side. It comes from the North Derby. The North <laughs> it comes from Kingdom. Derby. Okay. And, and then down. Is Woodbury part of the CB fiber? It just They just yeah. joined. Okay. You yeah. can say that. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so there's, there's that potential. Um, Velco is the other fiber provider in Vermont, which they have fiber to many substations, except for not the one here in Calus. <laughs> um, they haven't decided their business model yet whether they want to lease space or not on their fiber lines. Hmm. Uh, but in any event, we'll be using you know available and paying for it fiber. But my the data that I've worked with would estimate just to do the town of Calus, running the fiber to every property would be about $3 million. Wow. And if you amortize that over 20 years, it's not, it's about you know, $3 per house per month um, to pay that debt. So I wish we started this 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. It would be all paid. Yeah. You know, we were not thinking. <laughs> well, well yeah, Adolfi's going to take care of it. Well, Consulting's no, going to take I care think of it. That things just creep up. Yeah. You know? So that's sort of the update. We're meeting monthly. There's a business committee that, um, that I'm on, as well as the regular board meetings. All the meetings are on, on OCA, mm -hmm. and um, we've had some really good presentations from consultants, consultants who have done this around the country. Um, and we'll probably be putting out an RFP for their work when we get some money. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm pretty encouraged. So far. So, so it's good. I mean, it sounds yeah, like it's, you guys are, it took a while yeah, to kind of get things Yeah, no, yeah, it is. But that's, classic. Not, that's normal. And we, oh, the other thing is, we will not be running it. This 15, 17 member board is not going to get it into the operation of an ISP. We're going to be contracting probably for every piece of it the construction, mm -hmm. the supervision of the construction, the management of the building, and the service providing, you know, right. you got so a bad connection. Right, be so we'll, we'll contract almost all of that out. Yeah, I guess I never thought that you guys would. <laughs> you didn't think we'd sure be would want to. Balls? But well, be. actually, and I want to clarify, I didn't hear you saying employees. You're going to contract with independent contractors. The yeah. board's not going to have any employees. Please. We're going to try not to. Yeah. You're not an you're not an entity exactly. You're yeah, we are a municipal entity. We can a municipal entity, but you're not a 
you're not an LLC, you're not a business, you're not. We're a you don't have town government. You know, we're a government. Well, yeah, but yes. well, you're not have employees. No, because yeah, we, we could. We voted to create this. Correct. CD right. fiber. So we could. I mean, um, AC Fiber has maybe one employee, and they've contracted the entire operation out to an organization called ValleyNet, which mm -hmm. is a nonprofit based in, I think it's based in Lebanon. But they're the ones who are then running all the wire, doing all the phone. Right. So call let up. them have the let them go at it and find out all the bugs and. And they've done that. Right. I mean, we we are learning and quite a bit from that. I was going to say we can learn from their. The other piece of EC Fiber, um, oh no, the representative on the board. There's some interesting conflicts in the board. Uh, Mike Brenbaum from Plainfield is the mm -hmm. rep from Burn. Right. And he is running Kingdom Fiber as a private entity. Um, but he has given so much of his time to this He's thing. Wonderful. He is he really incredible. Is so, yeah. So and he, he knows his his operation is probably on its last you know, really? couple of years. So you the, the, the easy cloud. Yeah. 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 Cloud yeah, Alliance, yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever it's yeah. called. Oh yeah. right, Cloud Alliance. Easy and Cloud was the domain or Yeah. And so that's sort of my report. Do you have anything else, Scott? Jared? <laughs> Did I forget something? Well, I, you're not giving yourself enough credit, David. You've oh. been a huge asset to the whole organization. You are the data guy. I'm the data guy, yes. Yeah. 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 I actually have saved a lot of money, I think, for the contracting. Yeah. Cause but, it's, but it's focused. It. It's, I mean, it's, we're working on data and not weird ideas. So the crazy thing about this USDA grant, they cannot give out money to places that they've already given out money. And you're going to laugh when you hear this one. They gave out a ton of loan money to VTEL. VTEL. Right. Including Plainfield and Callis. Right. And we never got the towers. No, I know. That was exactly so, the story I so, yeah. <laughs> so, so we're, it turns out we're not that bad off. I mean, Callis is. But in terms of uh, CB fiber, 60% mm -hmm. of the households in CB well, fiber and, never got right. any. I was going to say, and VTEL didn't have a good track record of getting people Correct. what they promised in the first place. And the state is appealing it right now. Good. The, the, um, USDA and the FCC should mm -hmm. remove all that territory. I remember that whole, well, we won't go there, but I remember yeah. that piece, <laughs> that piece right. took a lot of money, and where is so it? So that, and then the, the Northern Board, I think I'm encouraged that between the state and legislative initiatives mm -hmm. and then the, the grant potentials there. And, well, thank you, uh, and guys. Weck works. Well, thank you, David. Well, the other thing, I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, for the town, you know, you have, you have the, new, the town hall and the town offices, we have, you know, decent connections and you can help support it. Right, it would be helpful. Just Do you have budget. any idea when you're going to be doing the survey? Is it soon? Yes. Okay, well let us Next know month. if we can help. Yeah, I will. And the survey, I'm sorry. It's going to ask about 25 questions okay. about who you currently have, if you have anybody. Okay. Uh, how satisfied or not satisfied you are. Okay. Do you use it for phone and television and all those other things? Okay. And then um, would you be willing to pay? Would you be willing to pay? And would you be willing to donate money or Right. Get money or pay in advance. Pay in a year in advance. Awesome. And, yeah, yep. that's, so that that's so that answers questions. the question I had, which is you said thirty dollars per household per month. Or but it'd be more than that. If we, oh, that, no, if we had, if we had the three million dollar, right. correct. The, the, that's uh, a bond. It would not. Be. Right, 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 right. But that made me want. Well, per household is kind of ambitious. What yeah. percentage now? <laughs> which you're gonna find. If I, I'll find out. I mean, find out. So EC Fiber, they have got anything from. Um, 35% of households taking it in some of their rural towns mm -hmm. to 75 to 80% of houses taking it. Right, right. so you said 75. No, doing, subscribing and paying. Oh, I see. Perfect. So yeah, because so you, said, you said it would be like 75 to to $100 per month, month for the service. For service. So people can pay a year in advance, 1200 2400 for two years. But for much faster service. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Now, is this going to, I'm such a. It's 100 up and 100 down. Service. Make it. Uh, is that DSL? No, way, way more than that. No, this is where you could watch. This is where a doctor could be connected to your house and look at your, ex, you know, you could do high resolution video between a school and a doctor. You could have three or four teenagers streaming mm -hmm. Netflix. All of <laughs> yeah. all of them, that would be important. <laughs> Actually, Jared's sort of more of an expert on the technology part of it. We haven't met Jared. No, no I'm sorry. Jared. 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 <laughs> And Scott, thank you for filling in as an alternate. Yeah. And Scott's been great. A really, another really great thing about CB Fiber is that they are not going to do evil. 
This is going to be You heard it here first. I mean, our clicks. Um, right. It's a, it's well, when it's all it's local, part of the, hopefully, local, the, the goal is to keep local. all the money local. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so that whatever gets spent here is in here. Right. Look and cranny. Like we just, that they, right. That <laughs> all the other ISPs, are, except for Michael, that are doing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's really to look forward to. Now, they did say, um, Jeremy Hansen did say we could have a second alternate. I don't know if that's something that we could. We need. Yeah. So I was wondering if yeah. you would continue on as a second alternate. I no. no. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, with Jared, I didn't, I didn't let mean. Jared finish introducing himself. But well, yeah, but yeah, we were going to appoint. Perfect. Right. Well, perfect. well, they we were going to appoint Jared. We, we sort of did that last meeting so that you could start going to meetings. <laughs> so this is the official. Um, but you would be the first alternate and. I was going to see if Scott would be second alternate in case both of you can't go for some reason. Oh, thank you. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, I should check But Scott has a really good handle on yeah. this kind of stuff. Well, I, I appreciate what's going been going on. It's yeah. Really, I mean, I can at least I know enough at least to know that it's really good. It's really good stuff. It's quite the. Um, it's way call? over my technology it's, head. The board is comprised of, some pr of an eclectic yeah. group of folks who have. Who else was on there? Well, I was just going to say, you're the, the, the attorneys on there from uh, Jim Barlow. Jim Barlow, Barlow right. <laughs> And then Jeremy Hansen, who is. So, the select board from Berlin. Berlin. Teaches at Norwich. Teaches at Norwich. And I. Look at all these good people. That's just three. And Alan Gilbert from Worcester. Oh, okay. And then Phil Hayek from Middlesex, yeah. and so it's a pretty. And now we're gonna have Jared, who's with um, RB Tech. Yeah. So, it's I mean, quite yeah, a group. what a great group of people, man. And then we, <laughs> Williamstown, who's guy from Williamstown? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, oh, Schneider, Schneider. No. Oh. Rick, Rich Schneider. No. Mm. Wait, that's yeah, North Rama. Rama. Oh, Rama. Oh, he's got always he's a character. WDV. <laughs> He's a hard worker. And, oh, yeah, I know he works. Great. That's good stuff. Well, anyway. And you guys at least have a little bit of fun, do you? Hmm? You guys have a little bit of fun? Mm, no, there's <laughs> and, and two and a half hour, three hour meetings sometimes. So there's, there's, yeah. they, go, frequent, they go longer. Huh? How frequently is it? Once a month. Yeah. The board and the business committee meets once a month. And do you know, do you publish your, I mean, do you post agendas? Yeah. Where? I put one up in East Gallus. They're electronically sent to the town clerk. I don't know what happens after one, that. I saw one last week. Um, yeah. Board, yeah. yeah, so we can't it's, we can't put it on the town calendar because it's not taking place here. Right. Mm -hmm. But we could maybe put a button on the right. We do have a web page that has nothing on it yet. Everything is on our Facebook page as far as I can tell. Since I don't use Facebook, I don't know what's there. Mm -hmm. um, is the Facebook page called C D Fiber? Oh no, is it? I don't know. Okay. I'll let you all know. Okay. Are you sure there is a Facebook page? I, that I know because we're fundraising through that. We're also okay. fundraising on the website. The website is just called cvfiber.net. And the way to express interest, David, and the way, uh, as you were saying earlier, of, to help, if, if that's how the board decides to prioritize, mm -hmm. what, what, how, what, tell, tell us again what's going to be your your measure of interest. Is it, is it survey responses? Is it, it is survey responses. Polling, yeah. Pulling from the survey from yeah. data, so it's important that we have a robust. That we have a robust response and a good return. And this good is interest. going to every community every, that's yeah, part in the of the CB towns. fiber. And um, and I'm going to make sure we're pretty active. Good. Yes. <laughs> no, that's good. Good. I didn't want to put in this all this time for no good. Well, no. <laughs> so Jared. Yes. We. I read a little spiel about you to the board when. We talked about it last meeting. Okay. Um, you work with RV Tech. Yep, I'm a. Yes, a senior. <laughs> oh, I'm a senior, senior network engineer with RV Technologies. Um, before that, I was an independent contractor. So I've done network infrastructure for probably 15 years at least. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what else would you like to know? You live here in Cali. Yep. Here. Where do you live? You Apple on, Hill. You grew up oh. on a dairy farm. In East Montpelier. Graduated from U32 local. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Can you ask him how old he is? <laughs> no, I'm not allowed to do that. No, okay. But he can tell us if he likes uh, I'm 38. Okay. We don't care. 
Um, you enjoy skiing, snow machining, ice fishing, camping. Um, you started at Arby Tech on 2015, and you were the owner of a Couching Lion Digital, which I'd never heard of. It was just me. It was an LLC <coughs> that I offered her as an independent contractor. And what was what is what was that? Uh, same things, IT, Technology. sports services. Technology. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of a large bucket. Okay. Um, you know, the job pays nothing. I do. <laughs> Absolutely. Like most jobs in town. <laughs> tell, tell us about why you're, why you're, because you, you work in technology, and I'm assuming, I don't understand the, the details well enough to uh, conclude, so I will assume that there's no conflict between your employment with RB Tech and the, the ISP. Um, but tell us, tell us more about what, why this is a place that you want to commit time. Well, I assume you had no con you would have not have offered no. to do this without checking with Ruben if you had a conflict, right? Absolutely. I made sure that um, everybody in my employer and on the board at CB Fiber knows where I work for. Mm -hmm. um, I I believe um, Jeremy's had one meeting with Ruben, mostly looking for information. Um, because Ruben knows everybody, mm -hmm. particularly in the telecom industry. Uh, yeah. We don't have any financial relationship with her. Yeah. Other than that. Mm -hmm. um, Personally, the internet service providers, particularly in Central Vermont, I don't think have done a very good job. Um, companies like Comcast, they are publicly traded companies. Every quarter they have to make their numbers, and that's what they care about. Companies like Vtel have done in less, in my opinion. Um, and I think it's fantastic that there is a community fiber initiative mm -hmm. that would allow us to not simply look at it from a financial standpoint, but to be able to actually look at it from a standpoint of trying to do, actually deliver service and build a community. Yeah, and I think that an all-volunteer board doing this is a great incentive for that to happen, rather than paid people Absolutely. doing it. Well, and I'm heartened because you have obviously experience, insight, uh, into the field and the fact that you're willing to commit personal time and energy is a great vote of confidence that this project right. is going to succeed. Right, and that's what I mean by, you know, it's all volunteers, everybody's doing that. Mm -hmm. So nobody's getting rich off it, everybody's doing it to help the communities. That's the idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think when you start to look at what is possible when it's not just organized as a for-profit corporation mm -hmm. and start looking more at what we can actually do to benefit the community, then it changes things a lot. Yeah. So now we've asked you questions. Do you have any questions for us? Um, I, this is my first time serving on a board, so mm -hmm. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm trying to just You'll be, be quiet and keep my eyes open. Um, but please let me know if uh, there's anything you'd like yeah, to do. Yeah, I mean, I think we periodically Maybe every quarter, day. Yeah, I mean, it's like going to say every quarter. Every, every quarter, quarter to come in and give the board an update yeah. because it sounds like it's gaining momentum now. I know it took a while to get things up and sure. running and organized, and so we didn't put any, you know, expectation on. But yeah. I think now we would. Quarterly be perfect. Mm -hmm. So as the alternate, how does that? You go to every meeting, David. Do you let? He can come, as he, he has been coming. So I mean, I. I, I mean, I think missed, it's good if you I can. I think out of the nine meetings, I've missed two. So yeah, you know, Scott and Jared have gone. And it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, because otherwise, if you just kind of pop in and out, you don't have as good of a handle on. And I, you know, I have to put a plug in for Orca because I've watched all the meetings I've missed. Yeah. Um, and hey, so, Orca. yeah. No, so when that, I mean, they're on the, they're on the a lot of strikes right now because uh, mm -hmm. Xfinity doesn't want to pay them anymore. I heard that. So. Yeah. And that, we keep finding more and more meetings for Jerome to cover. I know. I know. You know, at some point, it may end up having well, Pay for some of this, but still at this point, let's not yeah. let Xfinity get away with murder. Yeah, yeah, I think Jerome had let us know it was a couple months ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they've done a good job of the legislature, too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Making the case, yeah. All right, so I would make a motion to nominate Chira to be the alternate on the CV Fiber board. Second. Is there any further discussion or questions? Cliff, do you have anything? No, my question has been answered. Thank you. 
Okay. All right. You seconded it, Rose. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. And it wasn't on the agenda, but we could appoint Scott at our next meeting to be the third. Second, second alternate. Second alternate. Thank you so much for everything you guys are doing. It's way above my Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys too. My husband is dragging me on the coal company behind our retail. Oh, nice. I'd throw that out there. When should we watch for the survey? The next month. Okay, and it'll be like front porch forum. And I may communicate with you guys before I do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you need to come and talk to the board, just let me know, David. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank, you right. Thank you again so, so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All, All right. right. Well done, guys. Thank Thank you. You. Denise, do you remember the subject line when I emailed you saying Jerry's is around? It was, I found a treasure. You did find a treasure. You did find a treasure. <laughs> yeah. He seems like he's going to be great. I mean, and David's great. I mean, it sounds yeah. like there's just a wealth of information and knowledge yeah. for people yeah. serving on yeah. that board. It it's sounds amazing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. Next up, um, we need to reappoint Jay Copping as our health officer. And something happened with paperwork when we appointed him back in September. Anyways, it's time to reappoint him. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Cliff was an aye, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I said aye. Okay. Um, Conservation Commission, Stephanie Kaplan and Larry Bush are up. Um, so I would make a motion. Do you want to do them separately or can we do them together? Why don't we do, can we do the, can we do all of the ones we have to do as a block? I think we should do each committee or commission together. Okay. But so I would make a motion that we nominate, um, reappoint Stephanie Kaplan and Larry Bush to the Conservation Commission. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Trails Committee: um, Tom Blatchley, Randy Allen, and Reed Charrington. And make a motion that we reappoint the three you just named to the Trails Committee. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And um, Elizabeth Perry has agreed to be second animal control officer. She's met with um, Wilson. She lives in Maple Corner. So we'd have somebody on each side of town. She's aware of a training that she would have to go to at CVHS to be able to put um, after hours use of the animal drop-off facility there. Yeah. There's some kind of a coded entry thing that you have to know how to get into to drop off a cat or a dog, because they don't take cows or horses. Um, and Elizabeth was instrumental in helping with the Elizabeth Shed situation in Maple Corner recently, this fall. She is Cliff Emmons' wife. Oh, I know him. Nice. Yeah. Uh oh, I hear a critter in the background. Yeah, somebody's voicing their opinion, a member of the public here. Yes. Is that a motion? Mr. Dog? Uh, I don't think he can make the motion. He's not on the board. Okay. Dogs do have emotions. Uh, yeah, they do. I point out that Elizabeth's name is spelled with a D. Not yeah, a I corrected it on the other agenda I sent out, but. So, okay. so I will make Cliff probably doesn't want to. I will make the motion that we appoint Elizabeth Perry as our second animal control officer. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. She's downstairs. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, she she uh, was supposed to have met with uh, Wilson again <coughs> last Saturday, but because we we're both ill. We decided we didn't want to share that with Wilson, so we're going to wait till we're both feeling better, and then right. uh, she's going to meet with him again. It's almost sounding like it's evolving into uh, an assistant type function because mm -hmm. there's a lot of paperwork and records that he needs to help him there. Oh, okay, perfect. So, all right. Um, and she's got some ideas too, some other information, ways we could disseminate information to the public and whatnot. Good. Glad, yeah, glad to have it. Issue. Yeah. Great. Good to have some fresh ideas. Yep. Okay. 
when we met last time, we had some discussion about newspapers for record. And I would suggest that depending on what it is that's being published, it's going to probably depend on which paper it goes in. Hardwick Gazette is weekly, Times Argus is daily. So I would recommend that we um, record that we will use the Times Argus and Hardwick Gazette for things that need to be published. I can make that as a motion. Second. Okay. What, what did we get stuck on last time? I think it was what did we publish. And like I said, it depends on what we publish. Um, if we had to publish the warning for town meeting in mm -hmm. the newspaper like we had to do once several years ago, we would have to publish it in the Times Argus because of the time frame involved in getting the notice out mm -hmm. to households prior to town meeting. Um, if it's a announcement that we want to put in, whether it's maybe an employment announcement or something else, we might want to put it in both. The sure. Harvard Gazette and the Times Argus. So Should it you say or? The yeah, Times or. Argus or the Harvard Gazette? Yes. And then... Or and or? And or. It doesn't, yeah, it's, yeah and, and, or. it's and or. Yeah, and or. Um, and then as a practical matter, because lots of people read neither, we, when we really need people to know, we put things on public form. Right, like for instance, when a hearing gets sworn for a DRB meeting, I believe Dot puts it, Dot puts it in the Times Argus, but we also do the publishing. Right. We put it, and we put it in public form. Right, we have to have a newspaper of record that's right. still the statute, right. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so that's why yeah. that's there, because right. we have to do it. Yeah, and what's important to me is that we recognize that most people don't see that. And so... I don't know, I get a lot of people who say I saw an article about saw yada 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 in the hard work is at our times are because some people are looking. Well, some people do. Yeah. But a lot of people don't. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of other... You know, that's not where I look, obviously. I'm looking... I read, I read other things. But, right. Um, but we know that. We know that, when, like, for, the, for this survey, where we really want people mm -hmm. to, to, we really want uptake, we need other places too. Right, but that survey to me is different than what we're talking about with right, 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 newspapers, right. right? Because the survey we're gonna, probably not gonna, I don't know if they're gonna put it in the newspaper. No, it's not an official, it's not an official right. thing. We're right. talking about. We're about talking about notices, um, you know, when they, if they have to publish something in the paper about um, the foreclosure foreclosures sales. or yeah. something like that, that's what we're talking well, about. Well, people who are looking for foreclosures know that they have to read the newspaper. Right. Okay, so did we vote on that? I can't. No. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, liquor license for East Calus General Store, that came in. Um, if you remember last meeting, we did it. We did the Whammy Bar, Maple Corner Store, and Adamant Co-op, and East Calus hadn't gotten their paperwork in yet. It's here now. There's checks. Um, so would somebody like a, to make a motion to approve the liquor license for East Calus Store? I made like three motions. No, no. It's your oh. Second. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> okay. <clears throat> Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And I will send this around to be signed, and don't forget we have to, um, there's three of us here to sign it tonight, so. That's enough. That's enough, it's yeah. a quorum. And then we have to leave it for Judy to fill in her little piece. There's that. Is there two things to sign, or just one? Mm, just, just one. Just one. Okay, Cliff, do you want to talk about the RFP? Yeah, I looked that thing over. It's a piece of crap. <laughs> it is not. Somebody that's really, really crafty did it. You did a great job. Yes. Okay. I know you put, you know you put, uh, you respond to it. Did you? I did. Well, let's. my question was, Oh, you, I forgot you're not driving tonight. I don't think we have this guy. Yeah, oh, yeah it's, 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 it's in the, it's in the, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's in there. It's in there. So, 
Do you want me to ask my question now, Cliff? Um, yeah, or I, I mean, I read the question. Uh, basically, we had talked about uh, putting some kind of provision in here that um, uh, damages Valentine. Am I stating that correctly? Say that again. I didn't understand what you said. Um, basically, Sharon's wanting to add something into this uh, regarding um, the vendor to hey, gosh, the vendor to be subject to uh, penalties or fines, and if we had to endure an extended downtime in a server crash or something like that. Mm -hmm. Did I state that correctly, Sharon? Yeah, I mean, a downside penalty, we could consider an upside um, bonus for no downtime, just something to f underscore that, you know, lost the t downtime on, the, on our computers is a big deal. Not, I mean, I'm drawing from what we heard from the staff. From so the I did staff. add some uh, language into it for the people responding to provide some records of you know how they handle it and what their protocol is and whatnot none of the rfps that i reviewed had any clauses like that built into them i'm almost thinking this is something that would be subject to negotiation when we go into contract phase mm -hmm. uh, I I is that, something we could act on. that's that's fine um do other do you know other places that do that sure um, in my in my experience things like that would be not unusual at all um, I mean I'm probably used to something on a larger scale but uh, it's not crazy for us to ask for it or at least to you know put it out there as something that we would give um, you know extra attention to or we'd like to hear about maybe it's not one of the requirements but it's something we're very interested in I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to find out that people didn't bid because of that mm -hmm. but I certainly would want to um, who is that something we could ask during a we can ask an interview and then put it in the contract later so that it doesn't do as you suggest it might uh, well, but the other way to do that is to let them know that something we're interested in and not put it in the must list. Okay. That we'd like to discuss. As, the possibility. Yeah, we'd like to discuss that possibility. And because then, I guess the flip side of scaring them away up front is the, oh, well, you, there was nothing about that in the RFP. Right, right. Um, and so mm -hmm. kind of walking that middle line. Makes sense to me. Um, if we were going to do something like that, I would try to construct a bullet point to put under the section called financial proposal, which is on what is right now page five of the document, but I'm looking at it in Word. That's where I thought I might. Go, go, go back, go back yeah, up. Go back yeah. up. Yeah. That's where I right. thought I might. It's right there. It's on that page, um, That's where I thought I might see it, Cliff. Um, mm -hmm. So... So it could be describe your, um, or it could be, since this is a proposal, uh, a detailed breakdown of fee schedule, um, it, could, it, it could just say a, a proposal or a... Does it, is it called something that people will understand what that is if you call it a special, do we have like a special uh, wording? Or, we, or you could ask Jim Cliff. Cliff, you know what I'm talking about. You can come up with a, or I'm happy to brainstorm with you. I think it's just, um, you know, it's it's a risk. Um, the, the risk management? Uh, no. What we what we could do is we Green could fees. say, you know, state your policy with regards to compensating blah, blah, blah for extended down periods. Or state your willingness to put a percentage of your fees at risk for extended down periods. Right. It's it's that's what I'm thinking about. Is mm -hmm. a I'm gonna have to peel back years in my head, but it's it's a it's a it's a risk. Well, it's and a downside. I think if you have some idea of of what we're talking about, 
And then you can run, when you run it by Jim, he'll probably have some thoughts because he's probably. It may, it may like not be something municipalities do, but it doesn't mean that, I mean, yeah. in 15 years, people will be doing it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, like I say, all of the different um, municipal RFPs of this ilk that I looked at, none of them had anything like that in there. There's no reason why we couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Well, let's put something in there. And how we word it. So I'll, I'll, what I can do is cobble something together and um, Sharon, would you want to see it before we send it to Jim? I'm, I'm happy to if, if you if you you know if you want you know second opinion. I don't I don't have to. I think it's really what percentage it, to me. I'm crystallizing what percentage something around percentage of fees at that they would be willing to put at risk for loss of productivity through because of downtime. Right. That makes that makes sense too. Mm -hmm. They can say none. But we then we can have the conversation and we and we right. and it will just punctuate. Yeah. Well, and we have had a problem with and we've down, had a problem. We've had a, and I think we can say we've had a problem with downtime. This you know when we meet with people we can say it and yeah. and, it, and it was a real it was a real problem. Right. And if you have a problem in year one of the contract when you're re-upping and you've raised it at the beginning mm -hmm. even if you don't do it when right. you come back to re-up you can say look. Yeah. You let this go a year ago, we're not going to now. Right. Good. Okay. So is everybody I ready? Might even, I might even rephrase it to not speak of it in terms of downtime, but more of lots of productivity yeah, due right. to um, extended way. IT issues. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I've got a clear idea in my mind of what I can put in for that. Okay. So our... Um, okay, are we at a point, Cliff, where you think it's time to send it to Jim for review so we can get that done and then get this out? Yeah, what I'd like to do is um, go ahead. We talked last week with the staff of um, asking Barbara to proof it for us. Right, right. Yep. So we would have her proof it, and then um, we would uh, send it to Jim. Yep. Get his feedback, and what questions or issues that uh, come up have been addressed, we would then uh, finalize it and vote to move forward. Yeah. We're having Barbara, is that what you said? Yeah, she's going to just do just you know, the typos and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I sent Jim a note, I think you probably saw it, that yeah, this yeah. was going to be coming his way. Um, yeah. And you were the point of contact for that. Okay, okay great. Sounds good. <clears throat> I thought it was really well done, Cliff. Yeah, excellent. Really professionally pulled together. Yeah, it was very well done. I know you spent. I know you spent a significant amount of time on it, so we appreciate it. I sent him an email and already thanked him. Good. Well, thanks for the vote of confidence. Like sure. I'm willing to put the effort in and for the good of the community. That was the whole idea when I started down this uh, road. Right. <laughs> Great. Okay. So, um, does anybody think we need to vote on this or just move forward? I think we vote. Once we agree it's final and we agree gonna mail it we're going out. to shop this RFP. Okay. Alrighty. Um, one thing to be aware of, I think you saw it, Denise, but I don't know if everyone was CC'd on it. There's, we've got a meeting scheduled with RB Tech with the office staff. Right. That's not to talk about the, right. That's not to talk about this for specifically. I think Ruben wants to bring it up but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let him go there because it's it's not ready yet. He needs to wait right. he, he needs to he wait has and been monitoring the minutes of our meetings and right he uh, sent out the email and said yeah I'm, I'm gonna be there personally. Right. I, I saw that and I'm thinking uh uh that's we're not gonna, okay. We're, that's not okay. We're just gonna shut that down. Yeah. If he if, if he thinks he's gonna come and start talking about this, no. Well, it's just we're doing due diligence on behalf of the town. That's really right. That's all, all we got to say. Before. That's all we're going to say. We're not. No. We're not getting into the specifics or the issues. Nothing. No, we really cannot prejudice our process no. at all. No. Yeah. And this is why I haven't put this into the public section of the folders. Yeah. Um, Good. Vendors need to have yeah. equal chance to access it at the same time. Right. And I didn't respond to Ruben because. 
I don't want to open up that opportunity for him to start asking questions and right. things like that. So we'll, we'll just shut it right down Thursday. Okay, good. We're on the same page. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department Station Committee. I had my second meeting last Thursday. We started at 6 because it's light now and we could go across the street and look at the building and the garage and the land that was donated, although you can't see the land because there's 5,000 feet of snow. Um, but the, it's, a, it's a house from the 1800s and the garage probably from the 1950s. It's, it's a mess. It would cost so much money to renovate that that the committee is thinking that it would make more sense <coughs> to just demolish it. Um, and see what it would cost to put up, um, I think it's four bays they're looking at, to house fire equipment over there. Um, the next meeting is April 18th, and we're gonna try to have some architectural firms come to give us some idea of what they could provide as far as plans for the amount of money that I understand is Set aside, there's $18,000 to start some architectural work. There's been a few drawings done already. Um, where's my notes? From the fire department. Um, what else? What else? Um, we looked at the. Oh, there would have to be a. a sewage holding tank on this site that was donated to them. Um, they're going to start doing some more fundraising. There would have to be added what? A, a septic. Yeah, apparently right now there's a there's a well that's somehow it's in it's underneath the house because back then there weren't any regulations mm -hmm. in the whenever they put that well, in. It's convenient if you had to <laughs> pump it by right. hand. Yeah. Um, but, so that's something that has to be checked on. If this was the option that the two towns agreed to, they would convert the existing fire station into office and meeting space, knowing full well that there's probably not gonna be a lot of money to do that. Um, we also took a site visit to the building that's attached to the Calis Woodbury Fire, I mean Calis Woodbury Food, food Shelf. Um, and that space would be used to house maybe like the boat, the rescue boat thing that they have and, and stuff. Um, the Mason building that we were gonna look at that's on the corner there by South Woodbury Church um, is currently under a purchase and sales contract, so it's not available to, to look at. If that falls through, then we would check on that again because that's got an existing two-bay garage already. Um, they're going to be getting things ready to send out a mailing for their for donations, which they do once or twice a year, I believe. Um, that's I think we got that. That, I think was, that sounds familiar. That was in it was before town meeting, I think. We got yeah, something. I think I got it. But so that's pretty much it. Nobody's committed to anything. They've been very clear that they have lowered their expectation of what they were initially hoping for back when things started back, what, three years ago when they yeah. did that whole, yeah, that's whole thing? Yeah. Um, so, and they're, I gotta say, they're a good group to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a good group to deal with. Um, joint meetings, we're looking at probably May, May 13th, somewhere during that full second full week of May, the Poplar Hill Cemetery folks are supposed to be having another meeting when all of their pe the three, three meet remaining board members get back from various locations. Um, and then we should have a joint meeting with the Cemetery Commission. I've talked to Cemetery Commission. Um, I let Jim know about it as we talked about last meeting. Um, so it looks like it's probably going to be in May. I thought it was going to be sooner, but May's fine with me because we've got enough other stuff going on. Second week of May? That's probably the second, yeah. Okay. So probably sometime in there. Um, roads meetings. It looks like Monday, April 29th at East Calis Rec Center. 
and Monday, April 15th in Adamant. <coughs> so, Say the first one again. April, April 29th in East Calais, April 15th in Adamant. Are you good with those, Cliff? Um, looking at it right now, I think that's pretty nice. <clears throat> Those would be at seven. Uh, yeah, the 29th might, I think I can make work. The 15th, I don't think is a problem at all. Okay, Sharon Rose. So, um, I'm, I'm available, but what about our select board meetings? Because we would have met on the second, which uh, Monday, which would be the eighth. Right. But that's a U thirty two meeting. Right. So we're just not going to have a. Okay. We just wouldn't have. And a then we'll meet like... on the twenty second for our other one. Right. I know that presents. I suppose um, if we had anything significant, I could put it on the agenda for after the Rose meeting. If there was something that came up that we really needed to discuss. For, for after the 15th? Yeah. Or, or you mean yeah, after because we're at the 29th because we're foregoing that meeting? We're, well, we're foregoing the April 8th meeting because that's the Oh, it's the 22nd, right. Yeah. So we could put something on for the 15th if we need to. We might want to put on, and Katie, if, are you available? Mm -hmm. um, we might want to do some appointments on the 15th after the Rhodes meeting just because we need yeah, to. Yeah, if we're going to be there. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the 15th. I've got something on my calendar and I don't know how long it's going to, I don't know what it's going to blossom into. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the 29th, I think I'm fine. So you're okay on the 29th. And should I put you down as a maybe for the 15th? Is that what you're saying? Yes. So the select board at 7 on the 29th. Mm -hmm. On roads. Right. And I'll let, rec center. Yep, and I've already reserved it. I just need to confirm it with Scott and Rick Winston. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't do that until I talked to you guys. Um, but on the 15th, I think after the Rhodes meeting, we should do appointments and reappointments just so we keep people engaged. Yep. Um, and then if there's other issues, like we might have to sign orders, that kind of stuff. And Katie, you're, you said you're okay for both days. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're so wonderful. Thank you. And then um, on the 11th, we have the joint meeting with EMFT. Right. Yeah. I mentioned that last meeting, so everybody mm -hmm. put it on their calendar. Mm -hmm. Look, um, Denise, I put it on the calendar. You did. Thank I did. you. Yes, already. Thank you. Before it got here tonight. And you have an old fashioned calendar. I love that. It's actually better than this because stuff falls off on this. Right, and this you can see the whole picture. You can see the whole thing. I, I can know. see what I'm up against. Yes. Yes. I am yeah. a busy April. Yeah, we all have busy. And okay, um, I don't think there's anything else that I have to update you on, unless there's something I was working on that I forgot to tell you about. Uh, no. Um, I have a question about the orders. Okay. Is now the right time? Sure. Let's find the, the notes. Um, uh, somewhere in there, Alfred, two things. Alfred paid for the Western Star personally registration. And I didn't know he was going to do that. And I, um, I wish, um, I wish you were here or Sandra were here. Like, to me, that's the sort of, that's why I got the credit cards. Is so He doesn't have one. I know he doesn't. Right. But but it wasn't, it was never our thought that everybody who might ever have an expense would have a credit card. Right. I think we should probably let him know that we in have the future credit. that we have the credit cards. I think he did it on a Friday. The office is closed. The vault was shut. I, I wished he hadn't it, done it. Using his personal right finances, right? It yeah. That's I mean that's what that's one of the things that people don't have to do for the town anymore. Right. Um, so we should somehow communicate to him that if you make a note of that, Katie, right. I, I can communicate that. And then the other thing I was expecting to see 
the thing we talked about last Tires. time. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see it either, so maybe okay. he hasn't no, done it yet. Just... I know he was running behind trying to catch up all the orders because he's been doing so much plowing. Plowing. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> that he hasn't had time. No, to... fair enough. Yeah. No, that is fair enough, and, and maybe he was in town and had to get the thing registered. But... Right. Well, that was the time when he called me. Remember, I told you from. Motor vehicles. Oh, and you had to. I had to send that email saying yes, let him register, and I didn't know at the time that he was going to use his own personal. So. Yeah, it's it's just a bump. It is. But we know we don't expect, and I we don't expect employees to use their personal finances. Well, we don't expect, and we don't want. It right. Makes it hard. It it we're we're it it is. Uh, Incongruent with the arm's length that we talked about. Right. Last time. Right. Yeah. Um. Anything else on warrants? No, I just I wanted to just go back to the Woodbury Fire Station Committee. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to Denise um, last week, and at the previous meeting, not the one when I was sick, but the one before that, I was appointed to be with Denise and Barry at the Woodbury Fire meeting, um, but. I had since called Denise and I kind of backed out of it because my work schedule um, at the hospital, it takes me a solid 30 minutes to get from the hospital here. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm sure it would take 45 to 50 minutes to get there. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just don't really think that I can actively participate. That's one reason. And the second reason is I do have a conflict on the first and third Thursdays. I attend a church prayer group. And I thought, oh, I could just do away with it. But on second thought, it really does mean something to me, and I really don't want to give that up. So I told Denise that I certainly, you know, will do whatever I can at our meetings and, you know, actively mm -hmm. participate. But um, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to be able to attend those Woodbury Fire Department meetings. Right. And they're so. not necessarily always at six, and they're not necessarily the same nights. Yeah. But it, the, the, the schedule is kind of all over the place right now because. Yeah. They wanted to do a meeting on the 11th, and I said I couldn't because we have East Montpelier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but anyways, I'll just... So I just wanted to put that out because I had talked to Denise about it, but I wanted the rest of the board to know Yeah, so I guess I'll I just felt. go it alone for a while, and if Barry comes, that yeah. will help because he asks really good questions yes. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, he's really knowledgeable. Right. Well, and my hope for you, Denise, is that, that you know, if Barry, if Barry comes and kind of takes the reins on it, that... It's something you don't have to do. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. And that, that, because your time, your time and your energy is spread very thin. And I think we have great people, that, you know, like the ISP guys. Mm, you know, let's good. let's let them have it. And the other thing that occurs to me sometimes is that when you're there, um, it makes it easier for people not to be there. So that's just something you know. Mm -hmm. So if Barry is is willing, then maybe. Yeah, I'm hoping I don't have to go to every meeting if Barry is back on board. Well, he was out of town this last meeting. And it's not, not personal to Barry at all, but anytime there's a couple of people, if it feels like somebody's kind of got it, then I know my instinct is to go put my energy somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So so if, if Barry's willing to do it, maybe that's a place that you don't have to do it. Thank you for the acknowledgement. I appreciate it. Um, so anyways, I think that's it, unless there's Are we going to do any minutes? Yeah, we are. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't any more mm -hmm. stuff that I'm supposed to maybe update you on that I didn't. Um, talked about the meetings. What else is going on? I guess that's it. Enough meetings, right? I know last week I had a meeting every single night and every day except for Friday. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, find some things that you can that you say. You know, I'm just gonna let this one, let somebody else run with that. All right, minutes. All right, let's start out with January 28th. I know that probably the three of us or four of us have all looked at them. I think. Yep. I obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I looked at them all again today to make sure that because I know Sharon and I can <coughs> make. Comments. I don't know if you had anything, Rose. No, I read them, but I don't. I haven't been doing the comment thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. January twenty eighth. Is that where, is that what's there right now? Do you want me to, yep. Do you want me to keep pulling them up? Yeah. Uh, can you? Would you mind just scrolling yep. through quickly, just so we can say? Oh, that's right. 
Do you see Denise's comment in red there? Can you make this bigger? Yeah. Okay. And that brings us to the end. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the January 28th minutes? So moved. So moved. Okay, is that a second? So Cliff seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I'm assuming that this means we're approving the changes that were made. Oh, right? yeah. Right? Wait, so, I have a question oops. about Denise, because your red comment said that it was already discussed. Did, was there some reason that, that they, like, couldn't use U32 capstones projects, senior projects, for the ASH? Well, that was in the context of the ASH project. <coughs> they already talked about it. I'm just curious, like, what, the, what barriers come up when, um, with, uh, look, they're going to check into it. Oh, so it was already discussed as an option. So is that like a recent concept? No, it was. I, I made that statement after you suggested it that we had already talked about it at a conservation commission meeting. That it was going to be checked out because there's a guy on oh, the I conservation see. commission that's a teacher at U32, Mark. Um, okay, Mark Brown. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. Okay, so yeah. it's done the circle. That's yeah. okay. Okay. Are we ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Do we already do it? <laughs> okay, maybe. February 11th. <clears throat> Oops. I think it was sanding. Mm -hmm. And you added the E for lightning. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually, I thought that Alfred talked about salting on pavement. He does right. on the part of the Lightning Ridge Road that goes to the school, and then after that he doesn't. The accident that took place was on the dirt part of the road. Okay, mm -hmm. that's true. All right. Well, it looks like a bunch of, mm -hmm. it's some, there's some typo kind of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to And you're scrolling through these at home, right, Cliff? <laughs> yes, I played along at home. Oh, okay. yeah, I make a motion that we approve those with the edits. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, February Oh, <laughs> that one I, I went into a second time, and then I noticed afterwards, oh, yeah, I already read this one, so I didn't have any of this, but then I did. Anybody want to make a motion to approve the February 25 minutes? Well, I wasn't there except by phone for the executive session. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'll make a motion to approve the February 25 minutes. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, town meeting minutes. Now, Katie did a really great job. She did a really detailed set of minutes, which I find really helpful. Mm -hmm. But the ones that we're publishing on the website mm -hmm. or that are going to go in the next year's town report are more edited because they're otherwise they're really long. Mm -hmm. So, which ones do you want me to pull up? I actually, I confess I have not read these. Um, Judy and I and Barbara and Sandra have read the detailed minutes in detail, and I had made some comments which you incorporated. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, right. So there's, I don't think there's any comments on this guy. No, because I had given right. them mine previously. Yeah, I received them from you all. Right. Yeah, I incorporated them. So are these already, are they out in? They're draft. They have to be done in draft within five days, so. Um, yeah, so they're out already. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would make a motion that we approve the longer version and the um, condensed version of the town meeting minutes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great job, Katie. Yes, yes, you did a great job. job. I don't know how you did it, but you did a great job. Are you voting? I, 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 I haven't even read them yet, so you guys, it's done. Okay. You're done. Um, March 11th. There. So that one I changed. Um, so the, the draft says that we agreed, and I feel like maybe we should stay away from agreeing, mm -hmm. except when okay. we're actually voting. So we discussed a preference. Mm -hmm. And then I think I had made a comment or two. That makes sense, right, Katie? Yeah. Um, Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, we, March 18th was, we talked about having it here. One of the, who was it, Carolyn Morton mm -hmm. had suggested that she had talked to Alfred about having a roads meeting in Maple Corner, but that uh -huh. never happened. So I think we just need to change it to the town office, the Maple Corner Community yeah. Center. Oh, we didn't do East Cattle Store. Oh. Okay. I'll, I'll make the right changes. Yeah. Time. Okay. I think that was, I think that's pretty much it, right? I, on the, go back yep. up. The um, Woodbury Fire Department. Uh, mm -hmm. Just go up just a tad. Oh, um, the, mm -hmm. It's March 21st, not April 21st. Mm -hmm. Where? Third line from the bottom. Right there, it's March 21st. Ah, oh, good Thank catch, you. Rose. All right, is that a motion, Rose? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve these with the uh, edits. Cliff, did you second that? I did second that. That's what I thought. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, March 18. Another great job, Katie, capturing what people said. I don't know if we can do these because Sharon and Rose weren't right. here. Yeah, good call. Mm -hmm. Don't do them. Yeah, okay. so let's remember to do them next meeting mm -hmm. when John's around. Mm -hmm. What was the feel of the meeting? It was very nice. Um, people were very respectful. We had a good conversation. Um, if you look, when you look at the minutes, um, just I did read the minutes. Yeah, just there was some good ideas to investigate. Not everything is doable, but there's some things that we can check out. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy yeah. with how it went. Toby came, Alfred did not, and that's fine that he didn't. Mm -hmm. No, I mean he can't be everywhere. Right. Once. I mean he's out plowing roads, you know. Right. I don't think people understand that. I do. Yeah. So. Okay. I, you know, I, when I look through the orders, I always look at their time cards. Mm -hmm. Me too. And, um, it's incredible, right? Well, it's a lot, but so many of the days, it's like they end at 4 o'clock. They end at 4 o'clock. And I'm like, could, could it really be that it didn't snow on any of those days that it ends at 4 o'clock? You know, I really just, I'm, I really want to advocate for just different schedules. I really, I agree, and I, did you, did you talk about that night? That no, I wasn't meeting? there. No, oh, right. I so, had a stomach bug. No, <laughs> we, we talked about it briefly, we, the idea of staggered schedules, because that's on the list from yeah. when the board talked about it previously. Yeah. yeah. Do so we know that there are any towns doing that? They don't. They don't know whether or nobody, or there is not? There is not any that anybody knew of right off, and Toby had done a bunch of research um, on, you know, winter operations plans for other towns. Mm -hmm. And once we're done with all these meetings and we come up with some ideas, although Mac Gardner-Morse, um, it's in the minutes if you look at that, he suggested that there's a place at UVM, and I've got to get back to Mac because he sent me an email. They have some kind of a program there with, um, well, what kind of students? I forget now, but it's in the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, students that will do projects looking at like the best routes Maybe for somebody to take for doing driving a UPS truck or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he suggested, and he was going to meet with somebody at UVM that he knows that's in charge of this program, mm -hmm. and they might be able to have some students that would come out 
or review the roots and maybe they could come up with a better some efficiencies in the roots. Yeah. So I thought that was a great yeah. tool to utilize even yeah. if we find out that it's not any better. Yeah. Um, Stu Johnson from Vermont Local Roads who came said that Callis is one of the, there's five towns in Callis that have, in Vermont that have a ton of back roads, Callis being one of the high five. Mm -hmm. He said a plow route for any driver in any town is usually four, around four hours. hours. Yeah. And our guys, because of going back and forth to the town garage, their trips are like five to six hours. So I think it makes sense to see about either putting a stockpile of sand in Worcester, seeing if there's trade-offs that we can do with other towns to, you know, you know maybe East Montpelier could plow more of the county road because they're closer. And they know how to do it. And they know how to do it, oh, right. <laughs> um, so there was ideas like that that came up I think are worth investigating. And we do some of that already. We do, we yeah. do, but you know, maybe there's more. Maybe there's more, yeah. That we can do that, you know, and trade off with Woodbury for certain parts. You know, there's, so I, I, I asked Stu, who's Vermont Local Roads, if he would put something like that on an upcoming foreman's meeting mm -hmm. for the town, because um, road crews are, known to be very territorial mm -hmm. so talking about things kind of outside the box mm -hmm. sometimes it's difficult I thought they could put it on a foreman's meeting agenda mm -hmm. as you know can we talk about how we might help each other can we loan each other equipment and things you know maybe that mm -hmm. discussion could start That's taking true. place I mean maybe if the the UVM project looks and says that we're largely as efficient as we can be within the confines of Callus, but hey look what happens if, if we, you go to three towns, right now, now you've got a road crew of how many? Right, you've got much more um, sensical routes, and you can find a lot of efficiencies. Right, and then you know maybe you work with Worcester to put the sand pile there, and use so that they can use the loader because it right. does no good to have a sand pile if you don't have anything to load the trucks with. Mm -hmm. So I think that people are thinking, you know, let's look outside the box, and I think it's time. Well, I think um, we need to because the conditions are changing. Right, they're not going to get more better. The rain, yep. snow. So I'm sure some of these things will come up at the future meeting, so we don't have to rehash everything yeah. tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but I would appreciate it if we could go into executive session to talk about a personnel matter. Uh, so move. And. You have the statute quote there, Katie, right? Mm -hmm. Or 913. Mm -hmm. We'll go with 913.